You're a man looking at the world through a keyhole, and you've spent your whole life trying to widen that keyhole, to see more, to know more, and now, on hearing that it can be widened in ways you can't imagine, you reject the possibility. Now, the biggest news is they've created a new number. A new number? Yep, between five and six. It's called DERF. your whole life you've always been told there's only 10 digits but what if that wasn't true what if there were two more digits that were hidden within the other integers what if derf and thrembo existed what if you could use these in your own calculations we're gonna have to talk about number systems let's begin with our familiar base 10, the decimal system. I like to imagine these as buckets. We've got a bucket for the ones place, the tens place, hundreds place, and the thousands place. And as we count, we're effectively adding beads to these buckets. So one, two, three, each one is a bead, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now this little bucket, this column, doesn't have room for any more beads. So what are we gonna do? Well, in order to get to 10, we move a bead to the next bucket and clear out the column we just came from. So this is 10, we have one 10. That bead represents 10 one beads. And then we keep counting as normal. And when the tens is full, we move a bead to the hundreds. When the hundreds is full, we move the bead to the 1000s. So what number is this? We've got 2,000 beads, one 100 bead, four 10 beads, and two 1 beads. So we can do this calculation on the side, 2 times 1,000 plus 1 times 100 plus 4 times 10 plus 2 times 1 to get 2,142. So that is the number represented by these buckets. Now, base 10, the decimal numbers we are very familiar with, that's not the only way to count. If you've done any sort of work with computers, you've probably seen binary before. This is the language that computers use. It's the 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, whatever, right? So these buckets are going to be smaller. Each one can only hold one bead in it before it's full. So let's look at an example and we'll count to 10. So 1, the bucket is full. So we move the bead to the next bucket. So now we have one bead that's worth two. Now we at three, we have one, two, one, one, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. So as before, just given this information, we can figure out what number this is. We've got one bead worth 64, we've got one bead worth 16, one worth eight, and one worth one. So doing the same sort of calculation, we figure out that this is the number 89. It's 89 in decimal, but it would be 1011001 in binary. <clears throat> we can do the same thing for base 12. And base 12 will typically look like the numbers 0 through 9, and then A and B. That's the typical use for this. But if we wanted to figure out what number this is in our decimal system, how would we figure it out? Well, we take the one bead from the 1,728 space. We add that to the two beads from the 144 place. And then these six beads that each are worth 12, this one bead that's worth one. And how do we get these places, you're probably wondering, maybe you're asking. This is 12 to the zero, which is one. 12 to the one, which is 12. 12 squared, which is 144. And 12 cubed, which is 1,728. 
And if you were to go back and look at the binary and the decimal, you would notice the same thing. It counts up by powers. So one, 10, 100, 1,000, et cetera. Two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, et cetera. So now that we've got our buckets, we have some understanding of how these number systems work. We can assign each fill level, each bead, a symbol. So here we can say the first one's one, two, then three, four, five, derf, six, thrimbo, seven, eight, and nine. So there are a total of 11 beads here and we've named each one of them. So now we can represent numbers using this scheme. All right, so let's take a look at how we can convert traditional base 10 numbers into our Thrimbanese. So let's take the number 404, it's one of my favorite numbers in base 10, and convert it into our custom base 12. So the steps that you're going to do for this, so you got to figure out how many of each, or how many beads are in each bucket, basically. So we'll do an integer division with 144. And then we're going to want the remainder so we can continue to the next step. Let's use this little idle window over here to help us out with that. Make sure that we don't get any of our calculations wrong, because that would be a shame. So we see that this fits in there twice. We've got a remainder of 116. So now we'll do the same thing, but with 12, because 12 is the next lowest power of 12. And let's see what we get there. So 116 divided by 12 and 116 mod 12. So it fits in there nine times. And we have eight left over. So then lastly, you know you're at the bottom when you get here. It's eight energy divided by one, which is just going to be eight. And we don't have to go any further. This is the lowest power of 12. So in normal base 12, this would be 298. But we can convert this using our lookup table. So two goes to two. Nine goes to seven. And eight goes to thrimbo. So let's do thrimbo. So there we go. That's what 404 looks like in our number system. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do 72. I need to get these out of the way. Okay, let's do 72 in base 10. So we'll do 72 integer divided by 12, because 72 is smaller than 144, so obviously none of those fit in there. And then we'll do 72 mod 12. But we know that this is actually going to be 0, because this is in the normal times table, right? So 6 times 12 is 72. So we know that 60 in base 12 is equal to 72 base 10. We look, use the lookup table. 6 goes to derf, and 0 just goes to 0. So there we are. This would be derfty. Looks very similar, but that's derfty. Okay. Let's do one more example. Let's do 188. That's in base 10. A little subscript just to notice this is base 10. Okay, so 188, integer divided by 144. We know that only fits in there once. And we know that if we were to do a mod of this, we would have 44 left over. So now we can do that. And let's see, how many times does 12 fit into 44? Just three times, and the remainder of eight. Three, eight, eight. 
So 138. Now let's use the lookup table. So that's 12. Now let's use the lookup table. So we go from 1 to 1, 3 to 3, 8 goes to Thrembo. And there's our answer. So that's how you can convert from normal numbers to our Thrembo numbers. Okay, cool, cool. Let's take a look at some math that we can do now. So what if we did, oops, let's do 20 Thrembo plus Durfty three. So we know that Thrembo is basically eight. When you add uh, three to eight, one, two, three, you get 11. So this is just going to be nine. A nine in our system, not nine in a normal system. And we don't carry anything over. We would have if we'd gone one more. Now, here we've got two plus derf. So here's derf. We add two, one, two. That brings us to Thrembo. So let's add that. So there's our answer, Thrempty 9. If we wanted to check that that is correct, we can convert these back into the decimal values. So let's see, this would be 1 times 8. We've got to convert back here. And this is how many 12s we have. We have two 12s, so it's 24. So 24 plus 8, that's 32. Here we've got 3 plus 6 12s, which is 72. We saw that just a second ago. This is 75. And we know that 32 plus 75 is 107. So if this number is 107, then we know that we did it right. So we've got 9, but this isn't 9 that we're familiar with. This is actually 11. So we've got 11 plus 8 times 12. And 8 times 12, that's 96 plus 11, which is 107. So that's how you can do math with our new symbols. And you don't have to convert back to base 10. We just did that as a sanity check. So maybe let's do just one more example. Just to hammer it home. All right, so let's do Durfty Thrembo plus Thrembo three derf. Well, that's not how we write derf now, is it? Let's, let's do that right. Derf. Okay, so derf is six. So we got to add six to our Thrembo, which would be seven, eight, nine. And then we'd loop back around. So it's going to give us three. We got to carry the one. Now we've got derf plus three. One, two, three plus one gives us eight. And then we carry down our thrembo. So there's our answer. Uh, thrembo 183. All right, so hopefully you learned something in today's video. And if you're interested in number systems, keep a lookout. I'm going to publish uh, another two videos. This will be the first in a series. And when they're done, you know, I'll put the links here and I'll put them in the description down below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. All right, guys, see you in the next video.